Schools across the country are seeing a sharp decline in academic results, despite $319 billion in funding by the previous government. New data from the Productivity Commission report reveals 90,000 children are failing basic literacy and numeracy tests. In some cases, children whose parents dropped out of high school are falling five years behind their peers, while those in regional communities lag behind those in capital cities by around 18 months. The report suggests tough new academic and student student wellbeing targets should be met by schools to achieve any future funding. We have a good education system mate but it could be a lot better and a lot fairer and this report makes that blisteringly clear. I don't want us to be a country where your chances in life depend on who your mum and dad are or where you live or the colour of your skin but we are at the moment. The report tells us that if you're a kid from a poor family or from the bush or you're indigenous then you're three times more likely to fall behind at school. Joining me now for more on this is Associate Professor Rachel Wilson from the University of Sydney. Professor, appreciate your time this afternoon. What's been your reaction to the report? Well, unfortunately, none of this is news to those of us who follow educational data. Uh, we know that there has been stagnation in NAPLAN and indeed declines in the writing. We've only made progress on a couple of tiny areas. But the report makes a really great contribution with a strong analysis of where we're going wrong. And it isn't all at school level. In fact, what the report, the report shows very clearly is that we're missing out on having a really clear strategy to reduce inequity in our school, or rather to, to, um, to improve equity across the system. And that has been occurring because we haven't had adequate reporting or indeed adequate data to monitor what's been going on there. Now, the report looked at uh, five policy initiatives that have been in play um, and found that two of the most important ones had not been uh, completed. Um, and that was that we need an individual student tracker to really understand the dynamics of our, our um, education system and make sure it works correctly. Um, and that we also need to reform on assessment and have a range of much more useful uh, national assessment materials that teachers can use to drive learning. So why do you think it's been failing? Well, I think the, the lack of alignment between our national educational goals, mm -hmm. uh, which are very, very clear, we want excellence and equity. We want students to be lifelong learners, uh, to love uh, learning so that they go on to do more of it. We want them to be confident and creative learners. And uh, we want them also to be active and informed citizens. Now that list is our national goals and we do not have data to match those goals. Mm. We do have some data that could be used to, for example, monitor excellence and equity. It hasn't been reported on. And this report absolutely makes that clear. And it suggests that to move forward, we need a more targeted approach. We need to make sure that each of our educational systems uh, in states and territories and at every level is focused on uh, excellence and equity. And that means reporting on disadvantaged students more. It means um, mapping out trends and looking for where they're not going in the right direction. And it means having a more strategic and coordinated approach so that we can really uh, work towards those really quite good goals. And are we seeing the gap between advantaged and disadvantaged students growing quite rapidly? Yes, now that is evident in the NAPLAN data, which was analysed for this report, but it's also been evident for some time in other international educational data that Australia participates in uh, and a range of other indicators. And really, there is some malaise in our educational system. Um, we are seeing if more students finish high school, but we're seeing less school attendance. We've got problems um, in terms of making those sorts of outcomes like high school graduation really meaningful um, and ensuring that everyone's had the opportunity to, to leave school with a very strong literacy and numeracy and education broadly. 
So it's it's not just uh, an issue of there being problems within the NAPLAN data. These um, trends are evident across a range of educational indicators, anything you want to point, point your finger at, essentially. Um, now, what's been surprising is that there's not perhaps more public awareness of the difficulties we're facing in education. And I think this report provides an answer to why that is, and that is that we haven't been tracking it. We've been very busy pointing the finger at schools and saying, come on, you've got to be more accountable. But we need to be looking at the system frameworks and making sure they're accountable and doing their job reporting on data and you know making sure that we're very clear on our strategy we're implementing proper system level policy um because you know we appear to be going in the wrong direction and there are plenty of examples recent examples where policy initiatives have not been based on strong research evidence mm, some more accountability there um what do you think can be done to support children from lower socioeconomic backgrounds well, first of all, it's very difficult to have a conversation about the education system as a whole without acknowledging that the Gonski needs-based funding, which was proposed more than 11 years ago now, uh, has not been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So we need every school to get their minimum school resource funding. Uh, and at the moment, we have a situation where public schools on average are not receiving that full set of funding as designed by uh, the Gomsky review team. Uh, so activating that would be the first step. Um, obviously, you know, beyond that, we want to focus in with a strategy to ensure that different equity groups um, are being served properly within the education system. So that includes students with a disability, students from language background other than English, students in regional remote areas. Um, we even look at gender to make sure we've got gender equity. And we look at Indigenous students um, and students from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. Now, when we, we have those as defined groups of students, but we really haven't had our finger on the pulse watching them. Having a unique student identifier would mean that we could track their progress uh, more easily across schools and systems, and that we would be able to have a proper analysis of where we are doing well, and of course, where, where we've got more problems and challenges that we need to work on. I appreciate your insights today, Associate Professor Rachel Wilson from the University of Sydney. Thank you for your time. Thank you.